really cognitive the cognitive framework is for all levels because you need to make sure the teachers have the, stru- the children have the structure to learn from then you would choose depending on your area if you have a nursery brilliant if you don't have a nursery you would go you would double check that and then go straight into module 3 in reception okay the functions of it like I said it's to bring internally a structure like a filing system that they can link their learning to it gives them a hook the animal gives them a hook to apply their knowledge to it gives them a mental processing system that will allow them to differentiate and work out so it builds problem solving skills they can link old and new learning together. The psychological literature will show us that cognitive strategies such as categorization, association hooks and structured learning really improve the systems of the working memory and information processing speed. Now we all see that on seven, eight and nine year olds who've had an ed site because they're not keeping up. Their working memory systems and information processing are particularly low in different forms and different levels. Research shows us that the strength in the cognitive links to greater function in motor control, which is what we talked about, and you create a single motor template. And also it adds a bit of fun and an excitement to something that can be a little bit laborious. So here we go. Oh, we're missing Harriet. <laughs> She's gone. Okay, Harriet's the cow, <laughs> and her picture seems to have disappeared. But basically even young children will know that a cow lives on a farm. If they're outside, they tend to be in the field. If they're in the field, they're on grass. So you start to build from what children will naturally already know. They know that they're pretty large animals. So you would teach a cow as a tall animal. So you would ask the children to create a tall, straight line in their body. This is a tall, straight line. They all start with a tall, straight line. So essentially what you do is you teach them a movement and an association. And if you come to some of the workshops today, we'll go through it in a bit more detail. Then what you do is you teach the starting shape and association of the starting shape. So you could show that shape to a child and they would show you the cow movement. You could do the cow movement and they have a selection to choose from and they can choose that one. So this is a program that we have taught to non-verbal autistics. And they will learn to write because you build the concept first. So it actually does cause, uh, create quite a lot of, it has a diverse application from really severe difficulties to really quite mild difficulties. And then the letter family are those letters that start with a tall straight line of which you can see there. Okay, Georgia the pig, well she's fat. She has a really big fat tummy and pigs like to roll in mud. So children will know that they live on a farm, so they can be friendly with the cow. They like to roll in mud, they have a big fat tummy, but they aren't as tall as the cow, a bit shorter. So basically, they learn a movement which is about that, and so they draw in a big fat tummy and they turn around. I'll show you a video of it in a minute. So these children, again, will learn the association, and you layer it up animal by animal. You do the movements and association before you bring in the letters. The letters come in, this is just so you get a summary. The letters will come in in module three, not module one. Um, the sheep, well, they also live on a farm, strangely enough. Um, they're about the same height. I'll oh, put that, they're about the same height as the sheep. That, they should about the same height as the pig, but they're a bit thinner than the pig and not as tall as the cow. So you can see this is just information a child will already have. You're not directly teaching that. You're just raising it into their consciousness to link it to this information. And basically that you have two. So you have the Rupert the white sheep and you have Zach the grey sheep. And basically Rupert likes vertical lines and Zach's a little different. Likes to do things a bit differently. And so he likes your diagonal and horizontal lines. So it allows them to subcategorize these 13 letters into two smaller subcategories that they can learn a bit f- faster. Then you've got your rabbit. Now she's friendly with every other animal because she's not a formation group. She is a special placement group. So you, all of these, other, these letters that we're, with Pippa the rabbit, they actually belong to one of the other, let- the other animals. So an F, a G, and a Q, uh, a pig, F, is a cow, 
J, P and Y a sheep. And children will turn alone, you can ask them, so there's one of the animals that Pippa isn't friendly with. Anybody guess? No, the F's a cow. She's not really friendly with Rupert, no, sorry, um, Zach the Grey Sheep. So she doesn't have any letters that start with a diagonal line. So children will start to ask questions, you can start building in so they can mentally associate and link all of the knowledge together.